Welcome to our second part of the aesthetic object lecture. Um, today I'd like to give you a little bit more insight into what this can do as a type of therapy, but also as a type of a, an artistic engagement with narrative that can allow you to sharpen your skills as a writer. So it has a double function, this assignment. I enjoyed very much reading your part one and um, a lot of you described specifically objects um, uh, such as a vase or a ring or some uh, significant object from childhood. So that was fantastic. Um, if you describe something like an event, for example, a sporting uh, event, it was a little bit more difficult to pinpoint exactly the focal point of your description. So what you can do is you can uh, edit, you can create a different slant on the second part of the assignment and I hope I'll be able to help you to do that uh, with this lecture. So uh, I offered to you a description of an object that was a pen in the first um, explanation of the assignment. As I was working on uh, developing the further material for the lecture, I decided to actually change my object if this is the case for you and you also wish to change your object, um, you are allowed to do so. So here's a photograph of my very first dog. His name was Bucks. And um, he is the aesthetic object I'm describing in the second sample that I'm giving to you as my example. So one of the things that you can do, uh, whether uh, through memory of the object or through uh, some kind of visual like a photograph um, is to take in uh, all the information that you think you would want to be able to describe in this um, assignment. So for example, you can have a notepad or some kind of whiteboard to write upon and you can write down some features of your object uh, just in a kind of brainstorming fashion. So uh, my dog was definitely a large specimen for his um, uh, breed. He was over 100 pounds when he was fully grown. So he's quite a uh, uh, menacing looking dog. If you didn't know him, you may uh, you know, feel this kind of uh, impressive um, air about him, this large dog. Um, and um, he was also quite uh, uh, large in terms of uh, the frame, right? Like a stocky frame. So large, stocky, you know, um, or, you know, as he aged, he even became a little bit stout. You know, I'm gonna brainstorm all these words. I might not use all of them in my final uh, version of the aesthetic object description, but I want to brainstorm. Uh, the other really salient or uh, impressive feature about uh, Bucks was that he had a very shiny coat, um, almost uh, to the point that you would think he was groomed with some uh, fancy oil or something like that, uh, shiny, oily look. Um, and he had a uh, very kind of deep, uh, introspective look on his face. He always uh, seemed to be contemplating, so he didn't have a very goofy face at all. So uh, we can say serious. Um, uh, we can say um, very uh, reflective gaze, etc. So you jot down some of these words and then you know you put those aside as your um, bank of descriptors. Then so I'll share the screen with you the text that I provided I will give you a second file that has a little bit more information um, on the uh, the particular uh, approach to part two of this assignment. So uh, let me see, share screen, advanced files. Whoops. Oh, just a moment. Um, so the uh, part one, again, it can be edited and rewritten. It's not set in stone. I gave you feedback on grammar. I gave you instructions for how perhaps to make it a little bit more um, 
uh, refined and developed. Um, so now, uh, whoops, on the desk. Okay, so this is the uh, file where you can see my draft of the aesthetic object which I've been editing. As I mentioned, there um, are comments that I've provided in your first uh, part of the aesthetic object assignment. So if there are grammatical suggestions that I've made or uh, other um, uh, substantive editing uh, issues, for example, being a little bit too wordy, or um, if I've pointed out that there's word choice um, uh, that could be improved, etc. Uh, your assignment is not set in stone. You are welcome to edit further. So the um, color coding that I am encouraging to, uh, for you to use can be based on the Virginia Woolf text, which you would have read first prior to uh, embarking on the second part of the assignment. Um, and uh, you can create your own color coding, by the way. It need not be as complex as five different colors. So again, to review, uh, in yellow, you'll see uh, pretty much pure description where you are drawing upon the senses, the five senses to explain what you are perceiving, the uh, shape, the size, the color of the object, etc. cetera. And um, the green indicates here uh, a little bit further kind of description, which doesn't seem to um, arise just from your own uh, five senses, but perhaps from a general kind of perspective, a general observation somebody else would make. So um, uh, the sort of fuchsia pink um, is the information that is contextual. Where is the setting? Um, what are some of the key uh, um, characteristics um, or um, uh, contextual pieces of information that help the reader to place where, when, uh, and so on this object is existing. So for example, in Death of the Moth, uh, we are given information about types of moths um, in contrast uh, to butterflies, for example. So that's contextual information, right? So um, for example, for my aesthetic object, um, which I'm describing uh, here in this second sample that I'm giving to you, um, the uh, each time we were there, meaning at the veterinarian office, uh, he is poked and prodded. Um, and um, if you quickly glance at part two, the significance part, which I'm asking you to write uh, for the second part of the assignment. Uh, for example, the paragraph begins with the day of Bucks's checkup appointment, the day at the veterinarian office, right? So this is the context. And then in uh, this kind of light baby blue, you have the emotional um, uh, connotation, um, and this is where the significance begins to be developed. So this example here is, I reflected upon the anxiety that humans felt when they saw another couple's pet near death. So again, pure description, or I guess you can even call this context. So not all um, sentences are easily colored just by one type or category of um, uh, description. So for example, I could say, well, my pup was young is also kind of a contextual piece of information, but I would also very much agree that this is a general description kind of point as well. So I won't be too um, strict with pointing to ambiguity and meaning, but I just would want you to try to get at the baby blue kind of stuff that um, is the emotional coloration of the uh, object or the kind of significance that the object carries for you. So for example, all of this, how do we deal with the mora mortality of our pets when they approach the latter days of their lives? Do we sigh more often and hold our furry friends closer? Some of us perhaps find solace in rescuing animals from shelters. So I would put all that into baby blue. Um, more context, when my family lost their first dog, Bucks, 
to spleen cancer. He was 10 years old and I was away on a trip with my boyfriend. So this is again contextual. My mother had to hold Bax in her arms when he was put down. So this is a kind of general reflection um, uh, or description. So again, green or yellow, uh, I think is fitting there. Upon my return, I wept for hours in what seemed like days and months. So think about it again. Um, this is a kind of non-focalized um, description, so it could also be in green. Yet my boyfriend, soon fiance and husband, soon after, promised we'd look for a puppy when we find a place of our own. Um, so this is again kind of contextual, um, especially the stuff in brackets. This is contextual. The rest you could say is somewhat, um, again, general uh, statement of fact. So green could be fitting uh, for that. Whoops. We kept, we're going to keep this in pink. And then finally, uh, at the end of that paragraph, my mother, on the other hand, has never wanted another dog since Box. And this again is um, a kind of uh, greenish non-focalized description, but I also uh, would suggest that uh, it carries the emotional connotation of why I'm even writing this. So I would give that a baby blue um, color coding. So the final paragraph of significance, the sunny day we discovered the family farm where our first furry baby was born, reminds me of the joyful days of traveling with my husband on adventures that led to growth. Um, so the sunny day we discovered, this is all contextual, um, and then reminds me of is the emotional significance, right? So again, you don't have to be so precise, but I want to see where you think the baby blue stuff is and why this object um, is significant to you. I felt so alive when we met the eight corgi puppies, one of whom would become our dear Booker the corgi. Um, and I'll share a couple of pictures with you of the dogs right now, just to give you the visual. Um, you're also uh, welcome if you haven't included a visual of your aesthetic object and you have one, you could also include that. Um, so again, the rest of the paragraph, you're color coding and you're looking for the baby blue stuff, right? So for example, um, uh, when I look at Booker, I am reminded of Bucks and the, and the kind of first dog that he was, a companion, a friend, and a protector, okay? So this is the kind of baby blue stuff that I'm talking about, right? This is what uh, motivated me to write about this particular object. Um, and of course, uh, the uh, last uh, part of this paragraph as well, I keep a photo of Bucks on my desk along with a paw print of Booker that I had made when my first child was born. So I made a handprint and a footprint of my baby and a little paw print of my uh, corgi. So these are the mementos that keep reminding me of all the good we share when we have companions and furry children in our lives. So that's baby blue as well. So um, if you find the color coding to be a little bit complex, um, I encourage you to at least try to differentiate what's pure description, which is what I asked you to do in part one, and what is the baby blue stuff, which is what I'm asking you to work on in part two. So I hope that makes sense. And, um, and then uh, here is um, my first uh, black Labrador retriever um, uh, dog, a photograph of him uh, on one of his birthdays, I suppose, holding a little toy between his paws. And um, this is the corgi who's become uh, a very dear uh, companion as well. And um, the way that I want you to uh, try to finalize this assignment is to actually say, okay, so I created this description, then I created this significance. How can I edit these sentences to make the piece flow as, um, you know, beautifully as aesthetically pleasing as possible? So again, this is a writing craft kind of assignment 
which I hope uh, some of you find therapeutic. It also allows you to reflect upon the significance of something dear in your life. So um, uh, many of you have described, as I mentioned, uh, objects that have very, very uh, special memories around them. So please work on developing the second part and submitting the best edited version that you can by uh, next week. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I will be around uh, tomorrow to answer some questions. So if there is anything that you want to query, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. Thank you. Take care.